Patent Predictions, the 14-day outlook, but not by the numbers, right? If you want the numbers, you want to pull up our app. That is our One Degree Outside weather app, five stars on the App Store in Google Play. You can see the 14-day forecast for any location you need it for. This video is always designed to give you the context behind that, so you know what you can trust in that in those numbers and what you might want to watch for change. The first thing to look at is the overall pattern in the atmosphere. And a lot of times I'd like to start out with the 500 millibar heights. It is basically how high up you have to go in the atmosphere to get a barometric pressure of 500 millibars. You say, well, what does that matter? What it does is it tells you the average temperature through a deep column of the atmosphere with the warmer colors representing warmer average temperature and the colder colors representing colder average temperature. First thing that jumps out to you, well, maybe it could be one of two things. For me, it's the cold air that's across portions of Canada up by the North Pole. And the second thing that jumps out is the big upper level low that's coming off the coastline of the Northeast United States moving to the North and East. So to one regard, you look at this and say, okay, we know as of this early week recording, we've got Aaron. And Aaron, we will cover in detail through our insights video, that deeper dive into meteorology over the next several days. The point of this is to give you the overall pattern. One thing you need to watch for, and we talked about this in the monthly forecast, is that we're seeing the development of what I call a bridged ridge. You get a ridge that's across the southern United States and a ridge over the central Atlantic. This is a semi-permanent one this time of year. It stays there, all right? In general, as of this pattern predictions, the agreement seems to be among guidance that Erin should turn and curl and go out to sea. But I would suggest that there's a problem with that that you have to be very careful for. And the problem is this, not speaking in regards just to Erin, but in regards to the overall pattern over the next two weeks, when we see bridged ridges like this develop, oftentimes the weaknesses that are supposed to develop in them and allow tropical systems to curl north end up slowed or not really showing up to the extent they were supposed to at all. What happens is you get the northern stream disturbances that were there pulling away, and there it goes, and the ridge is able to heal or fill in very quickly. And if it does that, it does it quicker than originally anticipated. And oftentimes, these storms can be left to go farther west and stay a little farther south than originally predicted. So I can tell you that on our end of things, we'll be watching very carefully, particularly as it applies to anywhere from the Bahamas to Florida, to the southeastern coastline on any of these systems, including Aaron, in case they miss the weakness in the ridge and they don't actually make that turn to the north. Now, I have limited options as to what I can show you here. So you're going to see it doing what most of the guidance says and curling north. I'm just letting you know, I think you have to watch very carefully any tropical systems in the next two weeks to make sure the ridge really breaks down the way it's supposed to. And don't count any of these out entirely. I can tell you this, though here at home in New England, if you watch from New England to the Northeast, this is not a pattern that would favor running something up the coastline. So here's the thing. You can get systems to run up the eastern seaboard if this trough axis, this dip that you see of cooler air was a little bit farther west. If you had that set up in the Great Lakes or even had a disturbance strong enough to just tug it into the Great Lakes for a day or two, then you would have to be on guard all the way up the eastern seaboard into the northeast of New England. But we just really don't see that happening now. out over the course of the next two weeks. For the most part, you've got a trough that's dug out across the northeast that keeps that cooler air we looked at in Canada and by the North Pole still trying to dip in. It keeps an active jet stream, and that tends to mean that it would be very, very very hard to get any systems to come this far north into New England or the Northeast. Again, you'd have to watch around Florida, the Southeast, the Gulf, but not necessarily here at home. And I can back that up for you here. If we play things, or I won't stop it much, but I've got the jet stream drawn in here, the fast river of air high in the sky. Notice, yep, it's not a big trough, but it's kind of just flowing west to east all the way in through the 19th and beyond, digging in even more. And again, you can imagine if you tried to bring anything, Erin or anything else, up the coastline, once it starts to feel the influence of the westerlies, it's going to be very hard, if not nearly impossible, for it to get in here. Unless later in the period there's something we can't see yet where you've got a stronger disturbance to dig down through the Great Lakes and orient that jet stream ahead of it coming out of the south. So hopefully I've explained that in a way that kind of uh, comes together well for you here in terms of how I think things would play out. What you do get, though, with active westerlies and multiple disturbances in the northern stream is an increased chance for showers and thunder. And that's exactly what we see in the latter part of this week. We see that to some extent going into this weekend. And as we get into next week, yeah, the chance may dip a little bit as some cooler, drier air comes into play. So when you look at total precipitation, you would think, given what I just showed you in terms of precipitation chances, that we should see a significant amount of precipitation in the northeast. But we don't. How come? Well, because while these may raise the chance for scattered showers and thunder, 
at no point are you getting a southern tropical tap. So again, if the recurve happens offshore, you can see that's where all the moisture goes. It never gets here. It may go into the southeast instead, based on what we just talked about, right? But even if that happens, very hard to even get that tropical moisture to come in here. And that's why, while you see elevated chances for scattered showers and thunder on multiple days, you don't see a lot of rainfall. And that's why, in some spots, the drought will continue to expand over the next two weeks, particularly in parts of uh, central New England, where you're kind of in between these systems. In terms of high temperatures, it's exactly what you would think. If you're going to develop a trough in the eastern United States, that cool air in Canada we looked at available, you've got a bit of a pattern flip. You've got the heat that's with us here over the next several days and then bam uh, you're down to that cooler pattern almost that typical later mid to later august feel that comes into play and yes it does have an influence also on the overnight low temperatures so we're making a very normal transition into august a little bit more pronounced in the second half of the window because of the fact that we're talking about that trough that develops. If you're really into this stuff and you want to get more out of it, by all means, please become a member. You can support us and we appreciate it. Membership.1degreeoutside.com. Actually, we're going to be unveiling something for our members shortly after this video posts with our 24-7 weather network that's going to be uh, out there for everybody to enjoy eventually. But for now, We'll start out with our members. All right, that's the way things look for now. Look forward to seeing you again in just a little while here at OneDegreeOutside.com.